Tonight on Catalyst, was Einstein right about gravity? Very soon, we'll know the answer. And a lesson from Mother Nature on what to do with nuclear waste. Welcome to Catalyst and our 300th episode. Now, Albert Einstein's mathematical genius revolutionised physics. But was he completely right about gravity? Well, back in April 2004, a tiny space probe was launched to test that fundamental question. It was called Gravity Probe B, and it's the longest running experiment ever conducted by NASA. Well, finally, thanks to a breakthrough last year, it's about to produce a result. Jonica Newby investigates whether Einstein got it right. NASA advisory team is ready. I copy that. NASA team is ready for launch. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Main engine start. One ignition and lift off. The Delta rocket. Carrying Gravity Pro B, testing for truth in the physics of our universe. On April 20, 2004, a small spacecraft set out on a giant quest to answer one of the fundamental unanswered questions of our universe. We are now through the sound barrier. At stake is the reputation of the 20th century's great genius, Albert Einstein and also of this man. His entire career rides on this rocket. I'm here at the Mission Operations Centre for Gravity Pro B. Now, the program actually started 43 years ago, and very soon, it's all gonna be over. The world is going to know the answer. Was Einstein right? This is the story of two great men, tested to the limits. Dr. Francis Everett has had his ingenuity and tenacity stretched to breaking point over the last 40 years. And he's about to find out if his life's work will literally explode in front of him. I've often been asked how I was feeling and, and uh... The answer is, I was too busy to feel anything. <laughs> the other man, well, Einstein may be gone, but his theories live on at the heart of modern physics, some never tested until now. And this is the craft that carries the burden of their legacies. You, know, you look at it and you say, oh my goodness, look, it, it's a marvel of engineering marvel of physics and science. On board Gravity Pro B are some of the most delicate and intricate devices ever crafted by humankind. If just one of them fails over the next 11 months, we may never know the truth about gravity. Gravity is the first force in nature that anybody really, in some sense, namely Newton, understood. And of all the forces in nature, it's the, probably the one we least understand to the day. In 1915, Albert Einstein unleashed a revolutionary new understanding of the universe's great force. This was his theory of general relativity. Einstein realize that you have to treat gravity not as a force, but as a field. It means that things don't interact directly. It isn't that you have two objects which pull on each other, but each of them modifies the space around in some way, and then the interaction between the two bodies is because they've changed something in the space between them. No longer was gravity Newton's simple attraction between two bodies. Gravity was the curvature of space-time itself. Einstein saw a universe where mass warps space-time around it and black holes suck space-time into a vortex. One of 
the consequences of Einstein's understanding about gravity is a phenomenon known as frame dragging. Complicated name, simple idea. It suggests that as a massive celestial object like a planet rotates, it drags space-time with it. I mean, I drag space and time with it. What on earth does that mean? It means there's a coupling and that a nearby object somehow gets dragged, but it's not a force. Uh, it's not a force. It's a rotation of the local coordinate frame. And this is a really weird notion. But it was just a theory. While Einstein has since been proven right on most things, his theory about the nature of gravity has had surprisingly little experimental proof. When Dr. Francis Everett took on that mission back in 1964, he was just 30. He had no idea he'd give his life to it. It's still amazing how little testing Einstein's had. I, with the ignorance and simplicity of youth, thought I'd like a bigger challenge, and I certainly got it. In the end, I think just the sheer challenge of are we going to be able to pull this off became itself a driving force. So what took so long? Concept very simple. Execution, real hard, real hard. The concept did sound simple enough. They'd place a telescope and a spinning gyroscope in orbit. The telescope would lock on to a distant reference point, a guide star. Over the course of a year, they would see if there was a slight change in the angle of the gyroscope. With this simple setup, they could test two key Einstein effects and his theory on gravity with it. First is called the geodetic effect. This is the amount by which the Earth is curving its space-time. More important was to test the infinitely smaller, never measured frame dragging effect. The amount the Earth is dragging its space-time. The trouble was, the technology to measure such a tiny deviation wasn't humanly possible. So it's measuring uh, something, an angle as seen from 40 miles that is eh, some, somewhere like that. The kind of gyroscope you need is one million times, no, 10 million times more accurate than the most accurate inertial navigation gyroscopes. And that meant they had to invent an entirely new form of gyroscope. Okay, here we go. This is where that mind-numbing engineering challenge was taken on, the machine shop at Stanford University, California. Everett was here year after year as his team struggled and failed to make the heart of the gyroscope they needed, a sphere so perfect it didn't exist on Earth. After 10 long, frustrating years, they finally hit the right formula. A quartz sphere coated in an element called niobium. This is it. This is the gyroscope, the most perfect round object on Earth. It's even listed in the Guinness Book of Records that way. Put it this way. If you were to blow this up to the size of the Earth, then the tallest mountain on it would be just 2.4 metres high. Like all gyroscopes, once set spinning, simple momentum maintains its orientation. But unlike our earthbound gyroscopes, these have virtually no bumps, no touching parts, no disturbing friction of any kind. Even its axis of spin will be detected without touch through the magic of superconductivity. Chilled to almost absolute zero, the gyroscope's niobium coating becomes a superconductor, emitting a magnetic field which can be measured. 
free from all external influences, its spin axis becomes an inviolable pointer, deviating only if there are changes in the very coordinates of local space-time. They'd created the impossible, but they still had to house the gyroscopes, four in total. There was a spacecraft to build. Challenges in the spacecraft are pretty extreme. Spacecraft had to actually chase one of the gyros, and by that we mean one of the gyros, separated by perhaps a third the width of a human hair, spinning at 10,000 RPM. If it touches, the experiment is over. And we had to use little puffs of gas and have the whole satellite chase this gyro. And if the satellite got a little bit to this side of that gap, we had to get a little gas and puff it back. And if we made a mistake, it would be fatal. But it was the non-technical challenges that really pushed Everett's perseverance to the limits and beyond. I actually was doing some work at home and I received a phone call from home uh, from a man high up at NASA who said, are you sitting down? And I assured him I was sitting down. He said, well, I've just canceled your program. And I can't tell you what to do about it. Seven times they were canceled. Seven times they had to make the long trek to Congress to claw the program back. And as the decades ticked by, their goal seemed to warp and recede like space-time itself. We had some dark days. We had some things that broke. We had some things that didn't seem to work right. We had a fire, burned our whole lab. The glue that held it together was Francis. But on a clear day in 2004, Everett's superhuman tenacity pays off. The elegant Gravity Pro B is heading for the launch pad. It's taken 43 years, hundreds of scientists and more than 70 PhDs to get to this point. Now, the team's precious gyroscopes, so lovingly made in the most protected conditions, are about to be flung into the harshest environment imaginable, space. Everyone was holding their breath. Things do terribly happen sometimes. Now we have jettisoned solid motors. Yeah, it was awesome. When they finally said, we've got it in orbit, and uh, we could watch, they had a camera, and you could watch the last booster falling away. And we thought, my golly, it's up there. It's up there. It was a pretty emotional moment. Gravity Probe B unfurls its sails, locks onto the guide star, which will maintain its perfect alignment, and begins to orbit the Earth. Now, the nail-biting wait for data collection. Will a lifetime of planning pay off, or fail at the last hurdle, as so many space missions have done? If Everett's patience was tested over the last 40 years, it's nothing to the months, then years passing now. In 2007, they are able to make an announcement. 
the geodetic effect has been confirmed. That part of Einstein's theory has stood up. But the vital frame-dragging question has a problem. The gyroscope results just won't line up. Now, in 2009, they're ready to go public. Welcome and thank you for talking to the ABC. Can I ask first, what took you so long? <laughs> well, when you're making gyroscopes that are 10 million times better than any gyros that have ever been before, you might expect somewhere right down at the bottom of that, there'll be the odd little thing that you hadn't totally predicted. So, it's been a long saga. So, million dollar question, was Einstein right about gravity? If Einstein were wrong and there were no such thing as general relativity, then the uh, drift in the north-south and east-west directions would be identically zero, rather than um, the values that we clearly see. So, we can indeed say that when the Earth spins, it drags space-time with it, as Einstein's theory says. How does it feel to prove that? It's a good feeling, partly a sigh of relief, and partly that we've done an experiment people thought was impossible. <laughs> 90 years after Einstein first revealed his thoughts on gravity, the test is in. His legacy stands. Final measurements are being tidied up and Gravity Probe B will soon enter the textbooks. But perhaps the biggest legacy is the many people and technologies that were inspired by this grand quest to prove the impossible possible. Which is what it took to confirm one of the most astounding ideas ever conceived by one human mind. Thank you.